Hey folks, what's up? I am back with a video today. I know it's been a minute, but I want to show you how to get started using the use context hook for the context API in React. I know this has been out for a while and there's like a hundred videos on this, but you know me, I want to go through this super fast in a pretty basic example so that you guys can get to using this. Um, a little bit of background about uh, what context is. It's basically app level state management. So instead of passing props down through say five components, you're going to use the context to store some data up at the app level, and then you can access it at any of those nested components by just calling on the context and you can update the context and you can pull data from it. And it works both ways and you can add it to your project in like just a couple of files and just a couple of lines. It's super easy to get started. So everybody grab your terminal, grab your code editor and grab your coffee. And let's get started. A short disclaimer, we are not covering everything about to use context and the context API in this video. This is just going to be a quick and dirty example about how to get it up and running and, and throw it into your project. If you're looking for a deeper understanding or to know exactly what all context has to offer, I'm going to point you in the direction of the docs as I always do. I'll leave a link down in the description to these. Go over there pause the video, give them a read and come back. You'll have a much better understanding of what we're doing. You'll feel more confident. It'll be easier for you to follow along. So pause the video now, go read over the docs and I'll see you back here. All right. So if you do not already have a react application running, you're going to need to create one. I've got just a simple new boilerplate, create react app open on the right and the code open on the left. So let's get started. The first thing I need to do is create a new file inside of my source directory, and we're going to call this the mycontext.jsx. Now, this is where we're going to create our context that we're then going to use inside of our app. So to do that, what we need to do first is import create context from React. And then the only other line of code we need in this file is to export the constant my context because that's what we're calling it equal to create context and then we're going to initialize this as a null object so you can give it any kind of default value that you want but for the sake of this we're going to make it null and then we can close that we don't need that file uh, again so then let's head over to app.js now what we're going to do in here is kind of create the initial values for our context at the app level. So let's start by bringing in the context that we created and wrapping our provider around our application. So to get started here, let's bring in the context. So we'll say import my context from the, the context file that we created just a second ago. And then now we're going to wrap that around our application. So to do that, we need to say my context dot provider, and then I'll just move this down so that it doesn't yell at me. So then if I go ahead and save that, you're going to see that nothing changes because we haven't actually told the application to do anything with the context yet. So let's start by saying uh, const value and set value are equal to use state. And my initial value here is going to be a starting value. It's just going to be a string. I need to bring in a use state from React there. Okay, so now let's actually start passing down our context into some nested components. I'm going to get rid of that A tag that has the link uh, for learning about React. And I'm going to replace this with a component that's just going to be called test. Now, we haven't actually created that yet, so it's going to break our application. But we can create that uh, inside of a components directory. Uh, and we're just going to call that test dot jsx now i'm going to create a react functional arrow component if you don't have uh the app the snippet for that you can get it using this extension right here so just head to the extensions tab and grab that and so inside of our test component what we need to do is first as always bring in our context so we'll say import my context from my context and so then let's actually grab the values out of that. So before we can do that, we actually need to pass them to our provider. So we wrapped our application in a provider here, but we didn't give it a value. We didn't tell it what we need to be accessible. So 
what do we want to be able to access from the rest of our app? We want to be able to access these values here. So I'll close that up. Um, you can pass this say a string or whatever, but since we're doing the state variables here, we want to actually give this an object. So we'll say value and set value respectively coming out of the use state that we declared here. So I'll save that. And then here in our test component, all we need to do is say const value set value. And these are going to come from use context. And then we need to point it towards my context. So don't forget to import use context. And then now you can see if I just go ahead and print out value here, we need to bring in our test component. So if I save this, you'll see we have a starting value. So let's back up here and let's look at exactly what's happening. So we created our context. Then we can just close out of that. We're not going to touch it again. Inside of app.js, what we did was create some state variables at the app level. Uh, the initial value is starting value. And then we wrapped our application in a context provider attached to my context. And then we passed it the value of the state variables that we created. And so we are just calling upon the test component here. We're not passing it any props. And then inside of that test component, we're calling on the use context hook, pointing towards my context and grabbing these values out of the provider that we wrapped around our application. So that looks great, but let's go one level deeper. So I'm going to write a component that we're just going to call test two, right? And so if I open up my sidebar here, I can say test2.jsx and we essentially want to just grab the same thing that we did in test1 obviously minus the test2 component let's import this change the name of our uh, component here and so now inside of this right here we don't want to export the value again instead we want to create a button and this is going to say change value. So we are at this point into our second nested component from app and we're going to change or update the context value using an on click function on this button on click. It's going to be very simple here. We're going to say run this function set value and instead of starting value, we're going to change it to new value. Okay, so we've got our app, we've got our test component, and we've got our test two component, which is the button. So if I click this, it's gonna update our context value that is one level above our button. So there you go. So we could continue this process uh, as many times down as we wanted to, you know, if we wanted to create another test three component and a test four component and all the way through test 10, we could, we could just print a value and then a button to change the value and we could keep going and going and going. And every time we change the value, no matter how far down we are, it will change the context value and it'll also change all of the values where we have printed out from the context. So I know the nomenclature in this is like super confusing and I'm sorry for not doing a better job of that, but this was just a quick and dirty example. So if you liked the video, if you found it helpful, please leave a like, subscribe for more and uh, let me know if you guys have any questions down in the comments below. All right, peace. I'll see you guys in the next video.